Hey viewers, today we will be discussing the principle of evolution. If you want to know more on this subject, don't worry, this is just an introduction to a larger series. We will be looking at more detailed and more specific examples later on in other videos. For now, however, we will be sticking to the principle of evolution. I will be explaining two main things today. What is evolution and why is evolution theory just a theory? This last question has been added to the video because of one of my viewers specifically asking for it. Although I don't actually know, I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that Christians, as well as some other religions, deny evolution, claiming the evolution theory is just a theory and therefore not true. So what is evolution? Evolution is the change of living beings over a long, long period of time through random changes between generations and through the process of natural selection. Just as a side note, natural selection is also known as survival of the fittest, which is incorrect. A more appropriate name would be survival of the most flexible, but more on that later in this video. So back to the random changes then. Without going into detail here, I will say that every living being is unique. Physical characteristics are mostly determined by DNA, but the environment influences everyone as well. DNA mostly comes from our parents, but that doesn't mean we are the same as our parents. Some genetic traits skip one or more generations and some DNA combinations result in traits that cannot be found in either of the parents' DNA. Later in the video, I will explain how this affects natural selection and how this makes the species change over time. Now, however, we are going to take a look at how environment comes into the natural selection process. As an example, I'm going to use a flower, well, a bunch of flowers actually. Even though all of these flowers are nearly the same, they have small differences between them and we will see how this affects them. We're going to pick up half of them and plant them in a different area. Since the first group was planted in a sunny meadow, we're going to plant these on a cold mountain. So what will happen? The left group of flowers will bloom and make seeds, just like they always do. The group on the right, however, will mostly die before they can make seeds. However, some of them will survive. These flowers will make seeds as well. The next spring, the seeds will become new flowers. In the left side group, the flowers will be pretty much the same flowers as they were in the previous year. On the mountain, however, only the flowers that survived the cold made seeds and therefore the new generation of flowers will be more cold resistant than the last generation. Once again the left group will make seeds for the next year and once again a lot of the right group will die to the cold before making seeds. In spring the left group will once again be the same but the right group will now consist of flowers with even higher cold resistance. Over many many generations the flowers on the right will change to survive the cold climate whereas the flowers on the left will not change at all. Here you can see why it shouldn't be called survival of the fittest, but rather survival of the most flexible. The constant changes in environment make that you need to adapt to new conditions rather than stay the same. You survive by adaptation. Okay, back to the random changes between generations then, and how natural selection comes into this. Let's take another flower for this one, even though this type of natural selection is based on conscious or subconscious decisions, plants are still affected by them. Let's say we have a field of yellow flowers and a bee. To the bee, the flowers look like this. At some point, due to random change, one of the flowers becomes a little more orange one year. Although it doesn't seem like a big deal to us, look what it does to the bee's vision of the flowers. The new flower color, orange, is much more appealing to the bee and he will therefore choose to pollinate that flower instead of the others. This means that the next year there will be more orange flowers and less yellow flowers. As years go by, the yellow flowers might actually become extinct and the orange flowers will take their place. Finally, we get to the second question that I wanted to answer. Why is the evolution theory just a theory? Why the uncertainty? Evolution itself is a fact, there is no denying it. It is a fact that living beings change based on random changes, their environment and due to natural selection. That's not where the uncertainty is coming from. The why it happens precisely and why certain species need to adapt more than others, that is still open for debate however. Until there is a complete theory that explains every observation ever made, 
the evolution theory will remain a theory. As said before, this doesn't mean evolution is in doubt. It just means that we aren't sure about the details of the why and how. Keep in mind that gravity is also a theory. We know two objects attract each other, but as of yet, we don't know why the objects attract each other. So just like with evolution, there's no denying gravity, but that doesn't mean we have a comprehensive theory on it yet. I hope you learned something today and I will see you next time.